Coming out of the tunnel in Spartan Stadium, I think, is one of the most exhilarating moments of game day that anybody can experience. So many people screaming to the top of their lungs. The fog machines are hitting you right in the face. The anticipation of the opponent and the game that is to come is building up. So adrenaline is pumping all over the place. It is one of the best things that anybody could ever do. As a kid growing up in Detroit, I didn't like football. My first love was basketball. And as time went on, I eventually fell in love with the sport. Coming out of high school, I was an All-American. Some lists had me as the highest, the third best outside linebacker in the nation. My favorite thing about the sport is big hits, especially when they don't see me coming. Miller's had time to wind up. Now he won't run out of time as Norman, Chris Norman, draws a beat on him and decks him. So when I say I came to really love the sport, I mean I really love the sport. And a lot of people see this kind of a lifestyle and they think that this is what it means to live. The Crimson Tide of Alabama continuing their own record with their 58th bowl appearance. The opposition from East Lansing, the Spartans of Michigan State, co-champions of the Big Ten for the first time in 20 years. It's the Capital One Bowl from Orlando, Florida. Back in 2011, Michigan State played against the University of Alabama. Well, by the way, is a really, a really good football team, and it was a bad day for the Michigan State Spartans. Very early in that game, I would say about the third defensive series, I went down with a very severe injury that left me in a very bad predicament for the following five or six months. One other loss, guys, number 10, Chris Norman, the starting linebacker. He's already out right now. They're retaping his right elbow. I had tore a ligament, my elbow, called my UCL and also tore my tricep tendon. And when that happened, my whole world was changed. And that's not what Everything was different for me now. I was out of spring football. I had to miss workouts. I was constantly looking, watching my teammates enjoy the sport that they've been playing for so long. And I got lost. And I realized that there must be something more to life than a football game. When I was growing up, although I went to church all the time, I thought that Christ was a distant possibility instead of an intimate truth. But a friend of mine, he invited me out to a Christian camp that was for athletes. And at this camp, I'd seen something that was so different from what I saw growing up so long in the church. Basically, I saw young men and women do similar things. They were nice people. But the key difference was that they made it evident that they absolutely loved Jesus Christ. And I could see that they enjoyed him. And I didn't know that Jesus could be enjoyed. So once I had figured that out, it was the night of May 24, 2011, where Christ got a hold of my life he captivated my heart, and he changed me from the inside out. So as I recovered from my injury and I returned to my sport with this newfound love, I relish in the fact that I can now glorify God in football. 
my senior season started to come to a close, and the possibility of the NFL gets closer and closer, something different starts to happen in my heart. And my soul gets really restless, and I start to consider what would life look like if I were to do something else outside of football. So on the way to my last bowl game in my college career, as I'm wrestling with all of these decisions and possibilities, I crack open a book, Don't Waste Your Life by John Piper. And from reading that, I learned that every waking moment should be lived to the glory of God. And therein lies the ultimate delight. So these were the truths that were weighing in on my heart as I stepped out on what could possibly be the last game of my career. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. So after the game, I didn't say anything to anybody because I knew it was going to bring a lot of tension. There was a lot of NFL teams that were interested in. As a matter of fact, it was the Denver Broncos, uh, the Chicago Bears, the New England Patriots, and the Seattle Seahawks. About a week later, I decided to go to seminary instead. Pretty much everybody thought that I was making the wrong decision. My phone wouldn't stop blowing up. A lot of emails, a lot of calls. Well, what about your platform and your wasting what God is giving you? And what about financially you can help out your family? A lot of people told me not to do what I know the Lord wanted me to do. It was tough because I care about these people. I value their opinions. But the one thing that I have to do is follow Christ. Because at the end of the day, that's the opinion that I care about the most. I'm tired. I would love a prayer. Whatever needs that she has, I pray that they get met and that she just gets lost in your love. And I want to get away from everybody that do drugs. If you have a platform, then use it by all means. If God has you in that kind of a scenario, do it all to the glory of God. Instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. But the Lord used me to turn down something that is so much of a, an incredible opportunity like the NFL and to instead do his work in a different kind of a way. It, I, really, I really enjoy the fact that I can say that. It's my pleasure to live for his glory. Not because I'm flushing it out in a rigid kind of a way, but out of a heart that is overflowing with joy and love and thankfulness from the work that he did. I look at a situation like this with gladness. I made a decision and I really don't see myself doing anything else. The day after I decided to go to seminary instead, I got a call from a friend who knows a friend who just happened to be looking for some leadership on his staff at Highland Park Baptist Church, which is located in Southfield, Michigan, and also at the school that's connected to it. And he knew the decision that I was wrestling with, and he essentially said that if you decide to go into the pastorate, if you decide to do full-time ministry, then I want you to come and work for us. And as a result of that, we'll pay for your seminary education. We'll also pay you at the same time. 
And that was absolutely amazing because not a lot of people offer to do that. Jesus says something that I think is really powerful, I think is really profound, and I think is really true, and it's this, that if anyone saves his life, he'll lose it. But if anyone loses his life for my sake, he'll find it. True life, what it means to live, is all wrapped up in the way that you follow Christ. To do what he's asking you to do, to listen to what he says, and to chase his glory means that you will have not wasted your life.